Thank you very much, Ian, for uh, that introduction uh, and for the entertainment of the short film there uh, as you were speaking. I loved the local Aberdonian accents, didn't you? <clears throat> and I loved the premise that it was going to be a great breakthrough for Scotland because it would help with the fact that all this resource on their own doorstep, it would help the local drilling equipment companies. I can think of some other benefits perhaps we could have had with having such a fantastic resource on our own doorstep here in Scotland, <laughs> but it was a, a very fascinating film. It is fantastic to be here in my role as Cabinet Secretary for the Environment today, in charge of Scotland's Zero Waste Policy at the first event, the first event specifically organised to help move Scotland towards zero waste. So today is a bit of a landmark uh, event and a very important event as well. And it's so important that John Summers over there has worn the kilt and formal dress uh, for this event as well. I'm very disappointed you didn't all follow his example, but uh, I'm delighted, John, you've turned up in such great splendour uh, today. So why is zero waste so important? Well, Scotland is, of course, just a part of this fantastic planet that we're lucky enough to live on, which is full, of course, of the most beautiful assets and the most amazing natural resources, which have enabled us to reach the incredible heights of human achievement. But as we all know, our development has come at a high cost to our planet's resources and a cost that we all know is not sustainable in the longer term. In fact, it would take perhaps three planets, as WWF tell us, to support the demands that we currently place uh, on the Earth's resources. So for the sake of future generations, it's vital that we do reduce our consumption of non-renewable resources and lessen the impact on the wider environment. Now, that is a global issue, but Scotland has its part to play in tackling it, and we should show leadership in moving towards a more sustainable way of living. And the Zero Waste Plan is a key part of this change and moves our thinking from waste as a problem to seeing resources as providing a range of opportunities for our society. And delivering a Zero Waste Scotland will help conserve the Earth's resources, decrease our carbon footprint, create the conditions for greater resource security, and significantly contribute to our wider efforts to grow the economy sustainably and tackle climate change at the same time. And successive events to today's will, I hope, become the annual focus for zero waste discussion in future years. This conference is a chance for us to come together, to share experience and ideas, and to translate all those good intentions into action to achieve a zero waste approach in Scotland. And achieving a Zero Waste Scotland really is all about changing the way we do see things. Seeing resources, instead of being waste, resources that should be valued and not squandered. Seeing reducing and reusing as even more important to perhaps than recycling. And seeing the huge potential to bring economic benefits to Scotland, whether in developing the new technologies that we all need or exploiting the competitive advantages that Zero Waste operating principles can bring. These changes are not only important for zero waste, but across a number of other Scottish Government policy areas as well. The forthcoming low carbon economic strategy is a particularly good example of the synergies we can achieve across some of these agendas. And of course, the theme for today is unlocking the benefits of zero waste. So I've stated before that zero waste is one of my many uh, portfolio priorities. And I actually believe that focusing on zero waste policy is of even greater importance than ever given the current financial climate. So we have to ensure that the focus is maintained in the years ahead, regardless of the budgetary pressures we are going to face as a government, in your businesses and organisations, and as a society as a whole. But we shouldn't see moving towards zero waste as a burden. We should see it, of course, as a challenge, but a challenge that can deliver huge economic opportunities for this nation, as well as making a vital contribution towards our climate change targets and other targets. A huge amount has happened in the waste policy landscape since this time last year alone. The Zero Waste Plan was a draft proposal back then, but following the extensive consultation and the discussions we had, the plan, of course, is now published, and it sets out clearly the Scottish Government's waste policy for the next 10 years, including 22 specific actions to take forward over just the next five years. 
and the delivery landscape to support the plan was in the process of being reviewed a year ago, and many of you here today will have contributed to that process. And of course, we had an overwhelming view expressed to us that we needed a simpler, more integrated, more effective delivery programme uh, to move Scotland beyond the complex delivery structures that we had at the time. So we did listen to that message, and then of course we acted, and we've created the Unified Zero Waste Scotland programme, which is hosting its first conference as we know today. The programme's work is directly aligned to the Zero Waste Plan and provides a range of support to the business sectors, the public sectors and all stakeholders, as well as, of course, concentrating how we do deliver these specific actions that are contained within the Zero Waste Plan. And I have, I have, as Minister, I am, of course, very keen to ensure we have effective input uh, on an ongoing basis at a very strategic level from all the stakeholders in this room and elsewhere to ensure that uh, you can all play your role and, of course, in particular, the business community. Uh, that's why we did establish the Programme Board for Zero Waste Scotland, which is a number of high-profile individuals from a range of backgrounds. So the Zero Waste Scotland programme will be a key element of achieving targets towards zero waste, but that doesn't replace the parts we all have to play on an ongoing basis. The Scottish Government, the business community, our local authorities, of course, community groups, uh, various aspects of the industries involved, uh, and of course the public who are key to all of this. Everyone has a role to play in moving us towards a society which is less wasteful and more sustainable, and of course valuables, uh, values our precious resources. So hopefully today's event will help many of you realise the individual roles that you and your organisations can play. And I do see there are several key elements required to achieve zero waste in Scotland. One of the most important requirements is to ensure we've got progress in terms of being unified in what we're trying to achieve. We've striven very much to ensure that zero waste policy has cross-party support, and of course we've had a number of parliamentary debates, and if we can just keep that unified approach to where we want to go down the road towards being a zero waste society, I think that will be very, very helpful. And of course we need unity of purpose across all the various sectors. We all have to make sure we're all pulling in the same direction. Sometimes we feel we might be blown off course, but we have to get back on course as soon as possible and you know, support each other going down that road. And of course, we need strong leadership at the same time. And I do hope the Scottish Government is providing leadership by setting a good, clear policy direction. And of course, we need very importantly, strong leadership at local government level. And of course, Councillor He is with us here today and will be speaking shortly. And we're also looking to the business community to provide strong leadership both through their actions in dealing with their own waste and through the influence they can bring to other sectors and right across their supply chains, for instance. And, of course, there's the issue of funding. This is the thorny issue that can often seem like a formidable obstacle to achieving our zero-waste goals, but we always have to keep our eye on the bigger picture. The truth is that we can't afford not to change to, to, to more sustainable practices. We certainly believe that a zero-waste approach in the long term will be um, a lot less wasteful both in terms of resources, but in terms of our financial resources in particular. And I think as the picture becomes clearer, as finite, finite resources become uh, more scarce, and people realise that costs might be increasing as a result of that, then people hopefully will be even more aware that it's in their long-term financial interest to preserve the resources that we do have. So funding <coughs> at a business level or a government level will become increasingly an important issue as the years go on. And whilst the Scottish Budget is uh, about to hopefully be agreed by the Scottish Parliament in the next few weeks, and I'm unable to say much about that just now because it's uh, literally being agreed between ourselves and local government and then, of course, the Parliament, uh, we have to keep our eye on the ball as far uh, as, far as uh, these kinds of objectives are concerned with our budgets in the future. But the Scottish Government has defined a long-term target to achieve a 70% recycling target, uh, with uh, no more than 5% of waste going to landfill by 2025. And the Zero Waste Plan provides a stable policy framework required to give the, the, the market confidence to invest in the necessary infrastructure and facilities that are required. Some of the key actions from Scottish Government in the short term will be the introduction of landfill bans for certain materials to ensure they are moved up the waste hierarchy to recover their environmental value, the introduction of measures to improve quantity and quality of materials recycled, including mandatory food waste collection and will define the best practice for waste and resource collection systems as well. We will support waste prevention, reuse and recycling by restricting the materials that can be burned to generate energy from waste. 
And on these last three points, we are just about to launch a consultation on the most effective way to implement these changes. We plan to introduce waste data collection regulations also to improve understanding of commercial and industrial waste created in Scotland. And we will introduce a new carbon metric to measure the carbon impacts of waste resources and encourage the capture of materials with the greatest climate change benefits. And we will also develop a waste prevention programme for all wastes. And implementing these actions will lay a solid foundation for further progress in zero waste. But while Scottish Government and delivery bodies can lead, getting the detail of change just right will require significant input from all of you in this room today. So I really do encourage all of you to engage with us as fully as possible in the coming months. And a lot of today's discussions will be about the future. There are a lot of challenges ahead and we should not shy away from admitting that some of those challenges will be very tough and will require significant change. But right now, it might be a good point to perhaps take a break from looking to the future and reflect on what we have achieved so far, because we have all made significant progress on our journey, and we should all be proud of achievements to date. So I'm just going to give you some quick examples, because it is amazing when you look back just over the last year or two, just how much has been achieved across Scotland in different sectors. So retailers and food and drink brands, for instance, have demonstrated their commitment to zero waste. The Courthold Commitment concluded its first phase this year, reducing food and packaging waste across the UK by 1.2 million tonnes between 2005 and 2010. And that's enough to fill 128,000 bin lorries. And the value of this avoided waste is estimated at £1.8 billion. And the greenhouse gas emissions avoided, avoided amount to around 3.3 million tonnes. And I met recently with members of the Scottish Government's Grocery Retailers Forum, and they're committed to sending uh, their unavoidable food waste, anaerobic digestion, uh, and Zeros at Waste Scotland will work with the industry to ensure services um, are there to enable them to do that. And in May, I toasted the launch of uh, a second phase of the commitments with a glass of our other national drink. I'm talking about Iron Brew, AG Bars, and subsequently Heineken. Uh, I've joined also Robert Wiseman Dairies um, as Scottish headquartered signatories to the second phase of that commitment. And that moves the agenda on to looking at the overall environmental impact of food and packaging waste. So it's encouraging that there's more recycling and greater use of recycled content and innovative reusable packaging uh, being adopted by many of our retailers in Scotland. And of course, we want to see even more of our food and drink manufacturers sign up. And the construction sector is grasping the nettle too. We've recently seen a flurry of Scottish firms adding their names to 470 companies already committed to having the amount of construction waste sent to landfill by 2012. And through that commitment, 16 projects in Scotland with a combined value of £1.8 billion have set procurement requirements for zero waste. And that will divert 83,000 tonnes from landfill and result in cost savings of £8.5 million. So the signs are there. That over the last couple of years, businesses of all shapes and sizes are realising that reducing waste and recycling more and using uh, or producing less waste in the first place is all about good business sense as well as protecting our environment. When we are still easing our way into recovery, of course, all of these issues are more important than ever. And I am encouraged that uh, at recent Zero Waste Scotland's uh, research has found that Scottish businesses are finding environmentally friendly cost-cutting measures to help protect themselves from the lasting effects of the recession. And 37% of Scottish businesses have already implemented strategies to reduce their impact on the environment, specifically to make these financial savings. Uh, so again, that is good news. And of course, local authorities continue to make excellent progress as well. And I won't steal too much of Councillor Hayes' thunder, but we are delighted that recycling rates continue to rise, with 13 councils now in Scotland recycling more than 40% and an overall rate of more than 36% across the country. So again, looking at progress in recent years, if we go back just 10 or 11 years, and before we had the Scottish Parliament, that rate was less than 5%, and here we are in 2010, where the average is 36%, and we've got a number of councils exceeding that target as well. So over the space of time, 10 years ain't a lot of time, and we've made substantial progress over the past uh, decade. And the community sector continues to be a key partner for zero waste as well, and the increased funds will invest in over 80 projects, uh, including a number of projects which are working in partnership with local authorities to reuse bulky waste items which shouldn't be going to landfill. And, of course, each and every one of us as consumers is making a difference as well, 
and Zero Waste Scotland's campaigns are all about raising awareness about the need to reduce waste and recycle more. And the Love Food, Hate Waste campaign is just one successful example of that as well. And I was also pleased to learn that Zero Waste principles are being applied to the organisation of today's event. So whilst I'm sure we all appreciate the lovely refreshments you'll be having, and I hope you're going to go out and finish off the cake so we don't have to, you know, uh, have that as food waste, uh, it's good that we are actually using events such as this to put some of our, our principles into practice. And of course, in terms of the need for making the most out of our, our food waste, um, I was really delighted to visit Scottish Water's Deer Dykes anaerobic digestion facility uh, just recently, which I had the pleasure of opening. Uh, and again, that's about supplying electricity to the grid and using digested product to generate the electricity in the first place. So that kind of win-win approach as well is also something we want to become the norm across Scotland in the years ahead. Excluding fossil fuels and water, Scotland currently uses over 50 million tonnes of resources every year, including scarce materials like rare earths, which are used in everyday products, but only mined and produced in very few parts of the world. So I'm pleased to see the publication this week of new research backed by Zero Waste Scotland, which has set out for the first time how much raw materials could be saved by adopting simple zero waste actions. And it highlights 13 quick win resource efficiency measures uh, like better production me uh, methods and so on and so forth that uh, companies and others can adopt. And implementing these 13 measures could reduce the use of these by almost uh, 4 million tonnes a year. A reliance on certain rare, rare materials could be reduced by up to a quarter if we adopt some of these production methods. So it's so, so important. So we have to aspire to significant change in the years ahead if we are to meet all of these challenges we're talking about today. And that really would put us in a fantastic position to achieve our zero waste targets uh, by 2025. It's a big, big vision. It's going to be very, very challenging in the years ahead. Um, I recognise that in the tough financial climate just now, uh, there will be many businesses um, and many local authorities, perhaps, looking at their budgets they're going to be setting in February and March, who will be looking at all their priorities and they'll be thinking, well, you know, zero waste, it's a very nice aspiration, you know, it'd be good to have one day, but right now, you know, we've got to keep our community centres open uh, and so on and so forth. So there's going to be lots of tough decisions made by people in positions of influence in the months and years ahead. But we have momentum behind the zero waste vision for Scotland and the key for us all is to keep up that momentum. So that means, yes, taking tough decisions, but making sure the tough decisions go in the right way, because it is a tough decision to prioritise zero waste over perhaps some other things in society. That's a tough decision. So that's the tough decisions we do want to see uh, taken by those people who are in influential positions in Scotland in the years ahead. Because at long last, Scotland as a country is beginning to catch up on other countries in Europe that we've always held up as exemplars about how they've got things right and we've got things wrong in this country. So it's very encouraging now we can stand up and hold our heads high and look at other countries and say, well, actually, we've now got ambitious targets by 2025 as well, and we've also got all these exciting initiatives taking place in Scotland which are producing really good results. But I guess the key to all of this is to show that it's not a big burden going down the road to zero-waste society. It's full of lots of different benefits and lots of different ways for communities, for households, for business, for the public sector, and for government, and, of course, most importantly, for Scotland's environment. And that's the message we have to get across. It's the message that Zero Waste Scotland are doing their best to get across. And if each one of you in this room can go away today uh, a bit more determined to get that message across as well, uh, Scotland will be a much better place. So good luck today. Thank you very much. Music